and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're replacing parts on the Mustang that we've already replaced. Today we will be replacing the brake booster on the 1967 Mustang again. The front brake disc conversion kit actually came with a new brake booster unit that went matched the master cylinder unit that the kit came with. Unfortunately, within a couple months of having installed the kit, we ran into problems, namely that we have a vacuum leak around the push rod that connects to the pedal. So for those who aren't familiar with a brake booster, the brake booster sits on the engine side of the firewall, just inside the engine compartment, and bolts to the firewall right here. This portion protrudes into the passenger compartment and hooks to the brake pedal. When you step on the brake pedal, it pushes against this plunger, which passes through a diaphragm here and into the engine compartment, where it pushes against the master cylinder, activating the hydraulic brakes. In our situation, the vacuum that's being applied to this side by the engine is causing a leak on this side to where the pedal assembly enters. So this plunger is leaking around it. That normally doesn't happen for many, many, many thousands of miles, usually because a master cylinder starts to leak brake fluid into the booster and it eats the diaphragm. In this case, it had to be a manufacturing defect. To the credit of CJ Pony Parts, when I emailed them about it, they got a new brake booster in the mail pretty quickly. Unfortunately, a few negative points toward them. They never told me they were actually sending this and never followed up on what was actually happening. So I didn't know I was getting a new brake booster. So I'd almost ordered a new one. So ideally it would have been nice to have known ahead of time that this was going to show up and not just have it sitting on my door. But now that we've got it, we get to go through the joys of replacing it. So let's get under the hood and see what we're dealing with. As you may or may not be able to see, the brake booster is located right here, just ahead of the master cylinder on the firewall. There is a vacuum line run to the unit from the engine that I'll have to remove, as well as removing the master cylinder in order to get the brake booster out of here. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough room in my lines to move the master cylinder around without disconnecting it, but I'm hoping to keep the fluid in the system and not have to deal with that as an additional issue. So let's start by hunting down what tools we will need to detach this thing from the firewall. With the brake booster out of the car, you can see a significant difference, which is quite troubling. So this is the failed brake booster. This is the new brake booster. This bad brake booster has a, its stud shortened here manually. Somebody ground this off and just cut it off with like a die grinder. This one is already shortened and nicely powder coated and has nice matching hardware. Additionally, the failed brake booster has a different sized distance between where the pin for the brake pedal goes through and where the brake light switch rides on the outside here. 
That was the problem I had and that I argued with our customer service about and ended up having to modify my brake light switch to fit. The new one has a much smaller distance between inside and outside, which probably is closer to correct. So I think they sent me the wrong brake lights or the wrong brake booster in the first place. Let's just check this here. So the brake lights or the brake light switch distance in the old booster that it would travel is approximately five millimeters, 5.74 millimeters on that measurement. Five point four six millimeters at the narrowest point I can get to. All right, let's check this one. Three point five seven millimeters. So this one is a full millimeter smaller than this one, which is almost exactly how much I had to grind off of my brake light switch to make it work in the other unit. That tells me that unit was never supposed to fit with this car setup. So now we have a different problem. We have the issue of I had to modify components to get that incorrect brake booster to fit. So before we install this completely, we need to start testing out to see if the brake light switch will even work or if I need to find a new brake light switch. So let's go ahead and get back into the car. Now that the brake booster is installed, and I believe I didn't kink any of the master cylinder lines when I reinstalled it, I will go ahead and fire the car up and check to make sure I don't have any vacuum leaks and to make sure this booster is good. The test was a success. The booster is not leaking. The master cylinder seems to function. The pedal has a good feel to it. I had to replace the brake light switch with a brand new unit that I had sitting on the shelf. The one that I had modified to work with the previous booster was a no-go. It was way too loose to engage properly. So it was definitely the wrong booster they sent me before. This is the correct booster. So hopefully we also have solved whatever the problem was that killed the previous booster. Being that it was the wrong booster, I'm kind of leaning toward that it may have been possible that the shaft had a little bit too much of an angle into it every time the brakes were used and that destroyed the diaphragm. But whatever the case, it looks like it's fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the project, put away all my tools, and I'll see you all in the next video.